All right, what's going on, everybody? Back with another video. Today, we're back at the rack. And for today, we're gonna be going over my 10 gig networking upgrade. So this is not really gonna be a tutorial or a how-to guide. This is kind of just me uh, going over what I did and uh, how I use it. So let's see here. First things first, it's hard to see, but we've actually got the Microtech uh, four port uh, SFP plus switch. Now this switch is about 130 to 150 dollars on Amazon uh, Depending on where you buy it. It's really cheap. It's a really great switch It can also run as a router if you wanted to and then for the price it's honestly like a no-brainer I definitely recommend picking up one of these now when doing a uh, 10 gigabit uh, Network upgrade or a 10 gigabit network in general. Uh, you can do peer-to-peer -peer. Uh, You can just plug one into one computer and one into the other but I did want to do some things with the uh, network attached storage and stuff like that. So that's why I have the switch. So yeah, that's that. As you can see on the switch, you have a PoE in and a ethernet. So if you want, you could chunk this into like your main switch or whatever. Then you've got four SFP plus fully 10 gig uh, ports. I have my Mac Pro plugged into this one. And then my first R710 plugged into this one um this is my kind of my main file storage server for the network this host um i think it's a what do you call it vfs volume for my esxi host which is right here it also serves as my my high speed storage server so when i'm moving large files onto the slow server down here which is just for two terabyte uh 7200 rpm drives this is kind of like the catch-all for it so before it gets uh put on the here it gets loaded onto here this has i think one two three i think it has like four or five different um drives and it has a raid zero ssd a pcie ssd uh in the back and then it has uh some i think it has four 960 gigabyte uh 10k SAS drives, which is uh, it's pretty quick. So it definitely gets the job done with that stuff You know moving around video files moving around time machine back back up uh, sparse bundles and stuff like that. So That's pretty much it for the rack. I mean, like I said, uh, we've got the um, the main file server uh, We got the ESXi host and then I've got my slow file server uh, large bulk backup uh, PF sense runs on this and yeah so now I can actually take this off the tripod and show you guys the Mac Pro, which is over here. All right, move this out of the way. So this is my 2010 Mac Pro. As you can see, it's pretty dusty, so please excuse the dirt. But okay, back down here. This is my 2010 Mac. I've got the Radeon Vega. Um, 64. We've got the 10 gig card, which I'll get into in just a second. I've got a NVMe solid state drive and a USB 3.1 card. And I've got the Mac Pro Pixels mod and uh, an SSD for Windows. So the card I use on the Mac Pro is the SolarFlare, I believe it's the SNFF 512 card. And I'll post a link in the description for it. Uh, I got three of these for $60 shipped. Pretty good deal on eBay. Uh, I was actually looking at doing the 10 gig upgrade on the Mac Pro a long time ago. Uh, when I first started building the uh, home lab deal. And um, well, it turns out that the card options weren't that great. Uh, you had like two options. So you have the choice between the Sonic card and an Akadio card, which are about $120. They're both um 10g base t so it's copper it's rj45 uh you'd have to run i think cat 6a at a minimum and yeah so i kind of decided i was like there's no way you know i'm gonna pay a hundred dollars just for the card so there's no reason for me to pay a hundred dollars just for the card um so i decided to do some digging and i found a pretty old form of pci express cards that support 10 gig on uh, older versions of mac os so i decided to do some digging and I saw that this uh, Solar Flare card was uh, a card that was used pretty frequently in the uh, Mac Pro. And it was actually still supported up to macOS 10.15, supposedly. 
Now, um, a quick disclaimer, I haven't really tested this in macOS 10.15. I'm still running macOS 10.14. That's uh, macOS Mojave. So I haven't really tested it in 10.15, but as you can see, this has two SFP plus 10 gig ports. And uh, this card itself was like $20. So I bought three of them. Uh, one's in the R710, other one's in the Mac Pro right now. And this one's gonna be going in, I think the second R710 whenever I decide to do that. But yeah, so in order to get this up and running on the Mac Pro, all I had to do was download the drivers, which I will include in the link in the description below. Uh, before you install the car, you're gonna wanna install the drivers. You're gonna wanna install the 10.9 version drivers, the one that's signed. And then you're gonna wanna reboot, install the card. Now, another disclaimer. I, uh, for whatever reason, on my Mac Pro, I could not get the card running in the top slot. It would only run in the bottom slot. I'm assuming that's because it is a PCIe uh, times eight slot, so I'm guessing that's why. But that's just something to keep in mind. So after I get that all up and running, uh, let's see here. If I can go here to my Mac Pro, I'll just go ahead and show you guys that it's up and running here. Let's see if I can go here. And as you can see, I've got my 10G card. Focus, and I've got my regular Ethernet. And if I go to about this Mac, you can see if you go to system report, blah blah blah. And I go to let's see here, Ethernet cards, and you've got the Ethernet controller. You can see the Solar Flare Kex is loaded up. And like I said before, I'm on 10.14.6. I have not tested this yet in 10.15. Uh, I might do that sometime in the future. Might not. All depends. So, yeah, that's pretty much the Mac Pro side of things. Like I said, install the drivers. I will provide a link to them in the description down below. Install the drivers, and then you should be detected in the Mac OS environment. Now, that's only the first part. The second part is uh, connecting it to whatever you're connecting it to. So... Uh, that brings me to one of the things that I kind of wasted money on. Um, yeah, I kind of wasted some money. Um, these have SFP Plus uh, connectors. So this is fiber. Um, I initially tried to use the 10 gig transceivers from, I think, 10G Tech. And they didn't work. So um, they're really gracious in letting me return those. I know they usually don't let people return them. But they're uh, kind enough to let me return them. Uh, I tried to use a 10G transceiver and use a CAT7 cable, which is this one right here, and run it all the way behind the bed to a switch, which would have a 10G transceiver in it as well. And I bought the one for the Microtech switches, and just so I didn't have to deal with this, the DAC cables, which is obviously you can see is exactly what I ended up having to use. So, so in order to get this to work, uh, like I said, the 10G base T transceiver did not work. So I ended up having to use the direct attached copper cables, which were, I think it was $40 for the long one and then $20 for the short ones. And I'll go ahead and show you kind of how I have it ran. But um, yeah, the transceivers didn't work with this. So to my knowledge right now, the only option for the solar flare cards is using direct attached copper, which is a, it's a minor inconvenience, but at the end of the day, you're getting 10 gig performance for pretty cheap. So I can go ahead and take you guys over here to the back of the Mac Pro. Yeah, it's gonna be really hard to see because it's dark, but as you can see, I've got the SFB cable out of the back of the Mac Pro and it snakes all the way over here. And as you can see, it goes behind the bed back there. And it comes in to the Microtech switch up here. And then this one is connected to the R710. So I can actually go ahead and show you guys really well. Um, I perf loaded up right now. So if I go exit out of this, I exit out of that, exit out of that, exit out of that. Uh, I can actually do a real-world test too, um, but I think I have iPerf running on the server on my, let's see, 
on my R710. So if I go ahead and run iperf against the server, let's see here, we should be getting some pretty good bandwidth. Yeah, so seven gigabits per second. Ain't that bad. As you can see, I'm running it again. And I'm getting pretty good speeds here. It's nine gigabit per second. Which I think is about just as close to 10 gig as I'm gonna get out of this setup. So yeah, five, seven. Yep, eight, nine. As you can see here, we're getting pretty decent speeds. And uh, I can actually go ahead and connect to the server real quick. If I go here to view, and uh, let's see here, if I go here to connect the server, and uh, let's see, bring this over here, connect to the interface on the solar flare card. And all I had to do to get the solar flare card working on the R710 was just install the drivers. Uh, I think it installed it automatically from Microsoft Update. So I go ahead and go to the 88.13, which is my Solar Flare interface, and it should bring up a menu on which drive I want to mount. I'm going to mount the I'm going to mount the uh, PCIe NVMe drive, and I'll go ahead and drag this on. Now I've created a test file, which is basically the last video that you guys saw with the building the lab or whatever. So I'll go ahead and drag that over here. And this is a, let's see, this is a 57.83 gigabyte file. So we'd actually do a test really quick over to this and see how fast it transfers. As you can see, here is that bar. And check that out, 50 gigs going just like that. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It hangs out for a second, but you know, I think that's pretty good. So yep, yeah, and we're copied. It's not like, you know, blistering super duper crazy fast, but you know, it's fast enough. For what I needed to do. It's definitely an improvement over the gigabit connection that we Mac Pro users are so used to since we only have two gigabit interfaces from the factory. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Just wanted to show you guys my quick brief update to uh, upgrade to 10 gig Ethernet. Uh, any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave them below. And yeah, I think I covered everything. Switch, direct attached copper cables, um, the drivers for the Mac, Put it in slot two, PCI slot two. Uh, it might work in PCI slot four if you do some some tweaking. Other people can try it. I didn't get it to work. Doesn't mean you can't get it to work. Um, yeah, sell the drivers on the Mac Pro and sell the drivers on the server. Profit. That's pretty much it. Like I said, I'm not doing any trunking or anything crazy on the switch of, of just yet. Um, I'm going to wait until I get VLAN set up on my main switch and then we can... That's with some stuff there. But other than that, guys, I think that pretty much covers everything. I don't think I missed anything. Nope. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.